I spend it with, with uh, no marks. I, my father was just a medical person, had nothing with politics. He was somebody whom patients could wrong. <clears throat> I had a colleague whose father was, I think by then, yes. And I had another one whose father was a director. So we started working together. So because I was nobody here, I was drawn at the training college in Makomeo College for community development and social affairs. My friend was placed at headquarters, was the father of the peers. The other friend was placed at the regional office because the father was in a director. <coughs> so three things happened. First of all, I had the same inclination. I would read, why am I in the bush? But my father said, you know what? Even those who are there, they started in the bush. You go. <coughs> so I went. Kicking in was very difficult. But uh, because I was able to go home, stay in town, I adapted. The adaptation gave me room, and my experience was very high. I was the first to come from college to go into that college. The rest were trained there, promoted, and they came back to teach. So each time we would be sitting in a, they would be sitting in a staff room taking tea. When I'm walking in, they would all walk out. That's telling me that we don't want anybody from the university in this environment. It was that bad. So being a child, I started to work at 21, and I would just laugh. You know, to me, that was funny. I would just laugh, then I would say, oh, you are going out, I'm also going out. Then they would say, what type of a child is this? <laughs> right? And they were not young people, they were older people. That's number one. Number two, now I'm talking to the women. Before I was there, the men started saying, she will be my girlfriend. When they had not even proposed to me. Then I was placed in an office with a man who was the best friend of the principal. And the principal told me this man, when she's here, I'll get her as my girlfriend from your office. My God instinct told me, don't sit in that office. So the very first day I was shown the office, I placed my book there, then I walked out to the women's room. So I started chatting with the women. There was an empty desk, and I made that desk my desk. Yeah? So the next thing was, my friends went for training. I did not go. I felt sad, I wanted to leave, but I remembered my father's words. You are made of steel. You are going to make it. I remember. Few people came who had the names eh? after me. They went to college, got the training. I was still there. But God is not James and John. An interview came when I had worked for four years, eh? and I went for that interview. All those people failed, they wanted two people. I got the position. So I said, yeah, I can do it. Then from there, I went to college for training. I went for a postgraduate diploma. I finished the at Gunda with the diploma. Because our time, everybody finished with the diploma. Yeah, and then we went to the field, then we applied to come back to the degree. So I went out with the diploma, very disappointed, because the principal would not go out with me. I told the principal, you're my dad. Yeah. So after that, I went for that diploma. God just opened my brain. 
first did that is room with distinction. I will offer the masters. Just like that, and they told you you are a guinea pig. University of London is the top notch university. And it does not take any boredom mediocre. So I went into that diploma, I passed with the masters, I passed with commendation. Then I was given another scholarship for PhD. So my scholarships just flowed. And that was after some years when my friends had done their degrees and nothing. So I came out of that college with a PhD. Now, while you are in London, I was told we are giving you a place as Unilever, regional manager for Africa. I sat back and I said, yes, I've been here, but who will drop my arm? I am going back to my arm. And I came back. So the message to your friend is, visit, let the friend come and we have a chat. He is about to break through. Once he breaks through, do not think of going. My own son went for medicine. He left the course, went to Chasa College, left the course. As you and me are talking, he is a CEO for his own company. He has employed 16, 20 people. And he produces egg trays. He, he was about to leave, I'm going to China, I'm going to the US. I'm going. So I just said, are you not seeing the way blacks are being killed in the US? <laughs> are you not seeing the way the Chinese you treat the blacks? Go out to Malaysia and said, are you not seeing how your colleagues who went to Malaysia have come back for Tuesday? Because they are not doing school there. They go for school, they are introduced to something else, and then they end up confused. Sit down, make a decision. Let's wait on your decision, and we'll move together. So, young people, let me tell you, even if you go anywhere, when things go wrong, they'll send you back to my house. And there are a lot of devotees from 2016, we, no, 2002, we got 16 Malawians from age 12 to 24 who were deported from Europe. They were cheated, you are going to get a job, let's go. They were introduced to pornography and sex industry. And they are not the same, majority of them are now dead. Because they contracted HIV, they would not talk with anybody, and at the end of the day, they became older. So remember, wherever you want to go, home is best. That's amazing. I hope you've been inspired. I hope you've learned something new. Are there any other questions before we close? OK, I think we have asked and commented on everything. Thank you so much to our panelists for being with us. Thank you for making the panel here very busy. I appreciate it.